Yeah. Okay. Ready? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Are we live right now? Yeah, we are live. Okay, great. Good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Heck with the Airport Area Chamber of Commerce, and we're thrilled to have you with us this morning. We are officially kicking off a new virtual uh, workshop called Tips from the Experts. And our thought was that during your busy work week, um, we will pick a regular day to offer 30, 40 minutes of new content and content that really might help you through your week and help you in your position, whatever that might be. So our tips from the experts are for you to um, gain value from your relationship with our chamber and learn something every week, which is a lot of fun for all of us. I wanna thank, we're gonna kick off um, what I thought would be really appropriate in honing your Zoom skills with a good friend of ours, Natalie DiCario. Natalie is, uh, was born and raised just outside of Pittsburgh. She attended Carlo University and earned a BA in corporate communications and mass media. After graduating, she landed a job in telecommunications, uh, in the telecommunications field where she spent several years leading their digital marketing initiatives. Today, Natalie is the external affairs coordinator for Cabot Oil and Gas, a longtime member of our chamber where she manages the internal and external communications activities. Natalie enjoys merging, uh, merging traditional and digital marketing tactics to create impactful messages that spread Cabot's mission throughout the community. So I'm going to turn over things to Natalie this morning. She lives and breathes virtual meetings, especially through the Zoom platform. We thought it would be really appropriate for her to offer some, some really good tips on honing your skills as you probably conduct a lot of Zoom interviews and Zoom um, webinars just like we do. So Natalie, take it away. All right, well, thank you so much for the introduction, Chris. I am really happy to be here talking about Zoom, especially in today's remote working environment. So let me share my screen here and we will get my PowerPoint rolling. All right, so today we're gonna to be going through um, a couple things to help get you started. Um, then we'll go through configuring your account and getting the meetings and events set up. We'll talk about some branding options that you have. Uh, then we'll go through some live management. So while you're on the event, what you do to actually manage it. Um, and then some helpful tips for you. Um, and before we get into this, I'm not trying to sell anybody on, on Zoom. You know, I'm just trying to help educate you from, from my experience of what, seemed, what has seemed to work well. So the first thing, just want to compare uh, Zoom versus Teams. So I know a lot of people are using Teams right now, and it's, it seems like, it's, like it works best for internal meetings. Um, I've seen a lot of issues with people um, with external people, you know, just trying to get on board. The chat doesn't seem to work. Um, the view, so you can only have like between three and nine people on there. So they're making updates. Um, but Zoom just seems to work really well already. You know, they have their security issues up front. It fixed a lot of those things. So everything just seems to work really nicely, whether you are part of one organization or 10 different organizations coming together. So there's my little disclaimer on Zoom versus Teams. Um, and then I guess my last point here, both have webinar features. So Zoom, we're on a Zoom webinar right now. Teams also has uh, what's called live events. You can have up to 10,000 people on there, but it's, it's more, of a, more of a production, like a video production on there. So steep learning curve, um, seems cumbersome, and also just the people outside of your organization sometimes doesn't, doesn't play well. So. Um, moving on here, so just looking at the different types of Zoom meeting plans. So 
This is just for the Zoom meeting, so not into the webinars things yet. But there are a couple things on here that I just wanted to point out uh, as the difference between um, something that'll help you decide if you need a paid account or if you're fine staying on a basic account. So the first thing is looking at the participant capacity. So how many people can you actually have in a meeting? Um, on the basic account and the pro account, you can have up to 100. And on the business side, you can have up to 300. But if you upgrade to either the pro or business, you also have an option to add on a large meeting add-on. So that'll give you up to 500 or 1,000 uh, participants that you can have on one meeting call. The next thing, and probably the biggest one, is the meeting duration. So if you're on a free Zoom account, you can only have a meeting up to 40 minutes. Uh, but with the other paid versions, you can have a meeting up to 24 hours. So that's usually a big selling point for a lot of people. Um, next is recording. So as Chris mentioned, we're recording this one. So we, if you're on a paid account, you can only record to the computer that you're on. But if you move up to the paid versions, they give you some cloud storage that you're allowed to, to store things on as well. So once you have all of those things taken in cons into consideration, then you really need to figure out how many licenses, how many paid licenses you actually need. So between one and nine, you want the pro. If you need more than nine, then you're going to have to bump up to the business. So really look at how many people you have on the call, the duration, and your recording needs, and then make your decision based on how many people need paid accounts. Uh, when looking at your Zoom plan, there's not, there's not too many details here. You know, you have to have a paid Zoom meeting account first. So that's the first prerequisite for this. And then you can have um, from 100 to 10,000 people. So right now, um, I think they, they have it broken down into like uh, 100, 500, 1,000, 3,000, 5, and then 10,000. So it goes up from there. So based on, on what your needs are. So let's talk about a meeting versus a webinar. We've all been on a Zoom meeting where you hear the background noise, background noises, you hear dogs barking, you hear everything going on. Zoom webinar can eliminate a lot of those issues for you. So for the Zoom meeting and the Zoom webinar, you'll see a lot of similarities. So you have the poll questions, the chat, um, you can screen share, you get reports. So a lot of those things are very similar. Um, but the main difference for a meeting, that's where you want to have full collaboration. Everybody on the call, you want talking, you want to have the ability to share their screen, see their video. But if you only, like we're doing a presentation right now, where we just have a little set of, of panelists or speakers, that's when you want to go to a webinar. So you're not worried about say, hey, can you, can you mute yourself? We can see you in the shower doing whatever you're doing. It eliminates all of that and only focuses on the people who actually need to present information. So a couple other uh, advantages with webinars are they let you enable a practice session. So before this call, uh, Chris and I and Michelle and Susan were all on there. You know, we were not broadcasting live, but that gave us the opportunity to get on and make sure the, we, everybody could share their screen, the audio and video looked good. Um, everything was functioning properly before we broadcasted so you guys didn't have to see um, all that, can you hear me, can you see me? So it just saves a lot of the technical issues for a private room before you're broadcasting. Um, the next thing, like I mentioned, as you guys can tell, you're all attendees. So you don't have any audio or video right now. And that's what's nice because this is a presentation, you know, so we don't have the background noise. It's just a better way to, to manage your meetings. Um, the last feature that the webinar has is the Q&A feature. So down in the bottom of your window or on your phone or whatever device you're on, you should see a little Q&A button. So that lets you just kind of communicate with me. So, <clears throat> excuse me, at the end of this call, so I'm going to save some time for Q&As. So if you guys have questions about Zoom or anything I'm going over, submit your questions and we will go over all those at the end. So a nice feature. Um, it's also you can kind of nobody sees those so you can you kind of have different settings in there so only if people answer questions then you can see them so it's better than chat on there so it just just kind of locks it down and gives you some some better options for more easier meeting management so some other configuration settings we have on here um, Basic configuration is, is pretty much the same. So you set your topic, your description, dates, times, your security settings. Um, it all 
the, the basic functionality is the same, um, but down in the meeting options and webinar options is where we see a couple of the differences here. So the first one is enabling join before the host. So that I recommend leaving that unchecked only because another security feature for you, you don't know if you have, you can have 10 people join before you're even there. You don't know kind of what could happen as, as the host, you want to control what happens in your meeting. Um, so I recommend leaving that unchecked so nobody can join before you are in there. Uh, the next thing is muting participants upon entry. So in a Zoom meeting where everybody has, um, everybody can unmute or show their video, if you're in the middle of speaking and doing a presentation and somebody jumps into your meeting and you hear their dog barking or hear everything going on, disrupts your whole presentation, distracts everybody else, and you have to say, hey, can you, can you mute your microphone? But if they automatically come in muted, it saves some, saves some stress there. The webinar options, uh, you can enable your Q&A. So I always recommend that for, for webinars. So it's a nice feature. Um, and then the second one is enabling your practice session. So other than that, things are essentially the same on here. Um, authenticated users, that just means they have to sign into a, a Zoom account before they can join your meeting or webinar. Just another security feature. Um, breakout rooms and making the webinar on demand. Just some additional things to help you um, kind of manage your meetings. So the last thing that I know confuses a lot of people is setting alternative hosts from your uh, settings panel. So one thing, just to note here is that if you're trying to set an alternative host, they must be a paid user on your account. So uh, Chris could not make me an alternative host through this window on here because I'm not a member of the, the Chambers uh, Zoom account. So you have to be a paid user on the same account to be an alternative host. Later on, I'll show you a way to get around that. So once you're actually during a live meeting, you can set different hosts and stuff. So it's a little way around that. So looking at some more configuration here, um, both products here, they do, a again, a lot of similarities and things that overlap on these. So looking at both products, um, it's very easy to grab your invite or registration link. Um, you can customize all the form fields on your registration page, um, your registration approval, how if you want to do that manually or automatic, um, you can set notifications. So anytime somebody registers for your meeting or, um, or webinar, you get an email alert on there. Um, some other things on here, save them as a template. That's a nice feature to have and you can do that for a meeting and a webinar. So you set all your settings once and then you save it as a template and the next time you do a webinar, everything's already set. You don't have to do anything else. <clears throat> And then you also have poll questions on both of them. So we didn't set any up on here, but it's just a great way to interact with your viewers, you know, just make sure everybody's still awake. Um, a nice poll will pop up on the screen. Everybody um, answers their questions and then you can share the results and just have a nice little conversation about it. Um, so some additional configuration settings that you have with webinar um, on the registration page, you can set a panelist uh, bio and headshot. So there'll be a little speaker section at the bottom of the page where you can highlight who's ever speaking. You have, uh, if you have any kind of marketing automation software like HubSpot um, or Marketo, things like that where you want to track who's visiting your pages, you can set that up on there. Uh, source URL tracking. So this is something that I love because we just, we want to know where our registrations are coming from. So I, every webinar we have, I set URLs for, these ones are coming from social media. These ones are coming from the media. These ones go to, um, uh, I don't know, a partner that we have. So different things like that, where you know where your best source of registrations come from. So when you're promoting your next event, you can double down on that source and increase your attendance. Uh, you also get reminder emails. So one week, one hour, one day, you can set those up to remind all your attendees. Um, some nice follow-up emails. So after the webinar, an automatic email can kick out to attendees or absentees, which is a nice feature because we all know people register and then don't show up. So just a nice way to engage those people as well. Um, Zoom also does a survey, so you can set up a survey that'll run at the, um, at the end of your webinar. So you can either have it pop up in a browser when your webinar ends, or it can go on that follow-up email to your attendees. 
um, the post attendee URL, that is just uh, basically ties into the survey a little bit. So after the webinar ends, you'll all see like a Zoom window pops up so you can customize where you send people. And then if anybody wants the live stream, Zoom ties into Facebook Live, uh, Facebook Workplace, and YouTube. So a lot of different options on there. You don't have to do them all, but they're just nice features. It just really enhances the whole, the whole uh, atmosphere of your webinar. So some branding options here. On the meeting side, you don't have too many options, um, but on the registration page, you can set a banner image above the form. And then you can also add your logo to the page. And then on the webinar, you can set the registration page title, add your banner logo again, and then some additional things you can uh, customize the whole color scheme. So if you want orange text and black background, whatever you want, you can customize all of that. Um, they also let you edit the social media description. So whenever your, um, your attendees wanna share this on social media, you already have customized the, the social media description just to make it easier um, and more reader friendly for them. Another thing to know, they pull the banner image from your page and put it in the emails that go out. So you always want to send yourself a test just to make sure that um, everything looks right, everything functions properly, because um, you want everything to look nice and professional before you send it all out. So the fun part, um, getting ready with your live management. So. All my screenshots are taken from a host view. So if you're running your own webinar, this is what you're gonna see. Uh, so right now I'm not a host on, on this webinar that we're doing, so I'm not seeing all these controls, but I wanted to give you guys a good perspective of just what to expect when you're running your own webinar. So up at the top, you will first notice a little disclaimer up there saying you're in a practice session. So this is just, this is what I was talking about before where um, me, Susan, and uh, uh, Michelle were in a practice window. So you guys couldn't see us, couldn't hear us. I'm sure most of you who tried to log in early could see um, just a little generic Zoom waiting message just saying, hey, the meeting hasn't started yet. So this allowed us to go in here, kind of play with all of our settings, make sure all the technical things were set up, everything was good to go. So you guys didn't have to see that. Um, so if you were ready to start it, you just hit start webinar and then it starts broadcasting. But some other things just to mention down here, um, you have your mute and your start video buttons. And then a lot of these are similar. You just see some, some additional things that you wouldn't see as, a, as an attendee or just a regular participant. Um, participants, you can see um, who's all on the call. This is the Q&A feature. You'll see a little red, um, little red number pop up there when you get questions. The polls, this is where you'll launch your polls and you can pick which questions. The chat features here. Everybody knows the screen share button right now, big green button there. The record and more, this is where you'll get your live stream options here. So just digging into a couple of these uh, features right now. So this is the chat feature. So right now, I think we have chat on, um, so you guys can chat to us, but I like to turn the chat off during my webinars only because it can be a little distracting if you have certain things going up. Um, you have the Q&A feature, the chat window. It's just another thing you have to manage while you're trying to give your presentation. So you'll hit the chat button, you'll see a little window pop up and then three dots will pop up next to it and that just gives you these options. So you turn it off, nobody can chat, you're free and clear. And over here, so this is what have what you see if you click on the participants tab. So this is just managing all of your, your participants, your panelists, your attendees. So just kind of giving them the options of what they can do. So another nice feature is to set the video layout. So if you want active speaker view, if you're not sharing your screen, who's ever talking, it'll they'll, they'll blow up real big on your screen. Um, and gallery view, I like to call the Brady Bunch view. That's where everybody's individual video tiles are up on the screen at once. So however you want to do that, that's up to you or follow the host mode. So whatever, whatever the host views is what your attendees are going to view. So this is how I mentioned before with alternative hosts. 
So since if like Chris couldn't make me an alternative host on his account, so what they would do is open up the participant window, look at the panelists, and then they could make me a host or co-host right here. So also if like if we had a couple other people who we didn't want, they, they, we just needed them for the setup phase, we can move them over to an attendee. So a couple different options right here that you have for, for managing your panelists. A second way to do that is if everybody's video tiles are up on the screen, if you hover, hover over their window, you'll see the three dots pop up there, and then you also have some more options here. And this is where you can control who's muted, who has their video started, so it just gives you some additional management options over your panelists. This is uh, an example of sharing your screen. So I purposely left a ton of windows open just so you could see how overwhelming it could get. Um, but I recommend closing out all of your tabs except the PowerPoint or whatever, uh, whatever resource you need. So it's just, you get lost, you can't find anything. Um, it's just, it's a lot going on whenever you try and share your screen when you have everything open. Um, the one that's highlighted here, screen, this just means you're sharing your entire screen. So whatever, whatever you're doing, everybody can see it. They can see you opening your emails, they can do everything. But if you select one of these individual files, they'll only be able to see that window. So even if you click away from it, um, nobody will be able to see that. Another thing to note on here that a lot of people miss, if your presentation has any sound in it and you want that to come through, you have to make sure that you check the share computer sound button. So it's something that a lot of people miss just because it is, um, it's just a little, a little button down there. So another important thing to note. So now on to the live management for regular Zoom meetings. So this is something that more, I think more of us are familiar with looking at it from this perspective. So again, a couple different options if you're the host. So as a regular um, participant in a meeting, you probably won't see some of these options, but the host will be seeing these. So up at the top, just pointing out here, uh, the admit and view button. So I did see uh, just the other day, Zoom is going to start making the waiting room um, an automatically on option. So every Zoom meeting that you start, it's automatically going to be going to have the waiting room started. So it's a nice feature, you know, security thing. You can see who's trying to get into your meeting in case somebody looks uh, like they uh, like they might not belong there. You can you can kind of filter that with having without having people just jump in and bombard your meeting. So that's a nice feature there. Um, next, they have a new security button down here. So again, just another way to control what's going on in your meeting. So locking meeting, nobody else can join it. I I would keep the waiting room on there. It's an, it's a really nice security feature. Um, and then all your participants. So if you only, if you don't want everybody sharing your screen, if you don't want people chatting, so just some different controls that you have in there. So again, similar to uh, the webinar chat, you have you pop up the chat window. You can turn it off. You can make it. Um, you can kind of customize who you're sending your chat to. So a couple of nice features in there. And then this is what the participant window looks like in a Zoom meeting. So similar options down here um, as, the, as the webinar, but you can say you can mute people on entry. So things that, that you can set in the, in the main settings, you can also set during the webinar here. Um, and then the webinar or the waiting room is right up here where you can admit or remove people. So if you have 10 people in there, you can, you can manage all of that. Um, and then these are just a couple other little, little features, you know, as you're going through the meeting, if you wanted to um, just kind of give any, anybody little alerts of what's going on there. And then uh, right here, so again, similar to webinars, a lot of overlap in all these, you know, so it makes going from meetings to a webinar a very simple process, so not a huge learning curve here. Uh, but you have the same kind of uh, participant controls here where you can make somebody else a host, you can mute people, unmute people, um, so it's, it's really nice. So if you ever are in a meeting and you're the host or a co-host, you, you can mute people yourselves. You can turn off their video, you can do that. Um, I couldn't do it as a regular participant, but who's ever the host has that control. So if you're in there and you do hear somebody's dog barking or, or something's going on in the background, you can go in and mute them, which is a nice feature to have. Again, <clears throat> similar screen share thing here too. 
have too many windows, the shared computer sound is down here at the bottom, but it's the same, the same concept that you have going in from webinar to a meeting and with sharing your screen. So I'll start wrapping this up with some uh, tips to help you have a successful video stream. So audio, probably one of the more important ones, you know, so you always want to test things beforehand. So I know I'm, I'm on video calls multiple times every day. So I know if people can hear me or not, I know the right distance way to be from my computer. So you want to make sure you're testing that so you don't sound muffled or you're not too far away, too close. Um, if your audio, if your, um, if your webcam or computer mic isn't good quality and people can't hear you, then it's really worth investing in a good set of headphones with a microphone um, or a headset, you know, where people can have good quality uh, audio. Avoid rooms with echoes. So try and just, it makes it rough for everybody to hear it, you know, when everything's echoing, they're trying to figure out who's echoing from where, you know, so try to avoid any areas, any big wide open areas that could give you echo or any kind of um, background noise like that. Uh, when you're not speaking, if you're a panelist on a webinar or you're just a regular participant on a webinar, always try and mute yourself. Um, a quick little keyboard uh, shortcut is hit the Alt button and A, so that'll mute and unmute you. So you can do that real quick so you're not searching around for where the button is and how to unmute yourself. Um, but it's, it's just respectful. You know, you get a lot of background noise when people are just sitting on there, coughs, sneezes, dogs, you, you hear all of it. Um, and then the last thing with your audio, if it's still poor quality over your internet connection, then try and use the dial-in option. You won't have video, but you can, people will be able to hear you. And if you did need to use your, uh, use to like share your screen or do something like that, you can still log into Zoom and share your screen and just choose the um, dial-in option, you know, and you'll have, you'll have that. So you'll still be able to share your screen. Uh, next is the lighting. We don't want everybody to look like like their shadow people like in a, in a crime show, you know, where they kind of dark everybody out and you just hear their muffled voice. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. So try and find some natural light, you know, that's not too harsh. Right now, I have a window right in front of me and I have a little extra lamp sitting right here. But you want to avoid the light behind you because that washes everything out. Um, also want to avoid any harsh light coming straight down on you that kind of looks like you have a sun ball like in the back of your head. Um, and if, like I said, yeah, if natural light isn't available, have a little lamp sitting next to you. So it's, it's kind of balances out and, and people can see you. Uh, next is the angle. So I'm sure we've all seen video, video calls where people are like way down below and you're looking up their nose or they're way up high. So you want to be eye level with your camera. So like, you know where your webcam is, you know, we should know, see it right on your laptop or if you have an external webcam on your desktop computer, just try and be straight and eye level with that and looking directly at it so you look like you're, like you're talking, having a conversation with somebody. If you need to use books, whatever. I know when we first started um, the remote work, I had a cat food box propped up that I had everything on so I could have a good eye level before I got a nice little stand. So do whatever you can, but try and make that angle straight on like you're having a conversation with somebody. Um, lastly, we have uh, your background. So try and have a clear, clutter-free background that's not distracting. You don't want everybody just looking in the background trying to figure out, oh, what do they have there? What's going on? What's this? What's that? Um, so just try and have a nice, clear background there. Um, virtual backgrounds can be good, can also be more distracting. Um, I've been on calls where people's heads, shoulders are disappearing, and it's just, it's more distracting than, than they're actually worth. All the circumstances need to be right. You have to have the right color clothing, the lighting has to be right, the background has to be right. So a lot of different things in there. I know they're fun to do, but try and, and test those beforehand to make sure everything works so you're not just creating more of a distraction than, than is worth. Um, and then my last bit of advice is to do a test run before you have these meetings um, and the webinars too. you know, get your panelists together, get all of your, your hosts together, make sure everybody um, knows how to use all the settings, they know how to share their screen, they know how to use the Q&A thing, they know how to, uh, they just know how to use the whole system. Also test their audio and video and lighting and internet, you know, go through all of these things and make sure it's all set up so you're not in panic mode the day of your event and trying to figure out um, how, to, how to get their audio working that day. So those are, those are my tips. Always test everything.
Um, and that sums everything up. So now I think we will look at the Q&A feature here. So we see we have one question and okay, and that's just if I'll provide the PowerPoint with attendees. Yes, I can send this out to everybody so you guys can all have that. Um, so I don't see any other questions popping in, but now's the time. So if there's anything that you guys wanted to know, um, just start chatting away in that Q&A feature and I will answer everything as best I can. So thank you everyone. All right, one question is, how do you create a custom backdrop? Is that an option on the free one, on the free version? So you can, you have to create your custom backdrop off of Zoom. So you can make it in, in whatever um, platform you want. If you have um, like Photoshop or Illustrator, any of those Adobe products, um, Canva is another great resource. I'm not sure on the, the sizing specifications to make the background nice, um, but and everybody, even on the free option, you can have the virtual background. So down at the bottom, if you see when you're on a Zoom meeting, you can see your video option, the audio and video at the bottom left hand corner. If you click on the video, you'll have an option to set your virtual background. So that's available on free and paid versions. <clears throat> Yes, another question, the uh, recording will be available later and I will send out the PowerPoint slides. Uh, another question, can you elaborate on the scheduling and email reminders? Uh, so it is a very simple process to set these up. So for the um, for the one hour, one day, it's simple check boxes when you're going through and setting up your um, setting up the webinar, you just go in and you can select I want one hour, one day, one week, and you can also customize those emails. So it's very simple process and you'll see it when you go through all the features setting up your webinar. Um, how to do a poll question in a meeting. Uh, so I don't, I unfortunately, we didn't set up any poll questions right now. Um, so I don't have any to launch for you, but essentially, let me go back to that slide real quick, just to show you what it would look like. So if you would click on the polling option here, it would set up and you set all your poll questions in the setting. So you set those up beforehand. Um, and then it's a manual process to, um, to launch your polls. So you would launch polls um, and then it'll give you the option to select which option that you want to, uh, which poll question you want to launch. You launch it, um, it has a timer, it gives you um, little settings of how many people in your, uh, in your events were, um, have voted on the polls or selected answers on the polls and then you end the poll um, and then you can share your results with everybody. So a very, very simple process that you can do in meetings or on webinars. Okay, how do you show your picture instead of a name when you're not sharing your video? So to do that, that's also in the Zoom account settings. So you have to go into your Zoom account and then that will allow you to upload a little uh, profile picture in there. Let's see, we're getting a lot of poll questions or a lot of uh, Q&A questions now. So this is great. All right, poll questions, yes, poll questions are available during, during the webinar and the meetings event. Uh, somebody said, it seems like the time zones are tricky. Um, I'm not sure what you mean on the time zones being tricky, um, but when you're setting up your meeting, you it does allow you to pick your, your specific time zones on there. So um, that's, that's a nice feature in there. You can, it has a drop down thing on there where you can pick whichever uh, time zone you need it to be. Can someone else beside the host launch poll questions? No, so you have to be a host or a co-host to be able to launch poll questions. How do you schedule a Zoom meeting? So in your Zoom account, uh, when you go in there, whether you're free or paid account, um, on there'll be, you'll see a left-hand sidebar that has Zoom meetings in there and you click on meetings and then you go, um, and it, it'll just say schedule meeting and then it'll give you all of the options um, pull up my PowerPoint again here and show you one of the slides here. Um, 
So on this screen, this is the bottom of the, uh, the, the settings page. So you go through and it, it has just form fields. You set your topic, you set your description, your date and your time. Um, you set all of these things and it's just check boxes, you know, of, of everything you want set up for your meeting. So it's, it's very, very user friendly. Um, it also gives you a meeting or an option to set things as a template. Like I mentioned, you can uh, set things um, you can set it as a recurring meeting. So if you know every Tuesday at nine o'clock you are doing this group call, you can set that up so it just goes on everybody's cal calendar recurring. Um, but it's a, it's a very simple, just walk through the steps and it, it lists out everything that you need to do to set to schedule your meeting. And then from there, you just, it'll give you a, an invite link or a link to the registration page. You can just grab that and then send that out to whoever you need to be at the meeting and they can register or join um, and it, it should go pretty smoothly on there. All right, and it looks like that is all the questions that we have. So with that, let's see, it is 10.35, so I think we'll kick this back over to uh, Chris. And the video's not coming back on. Oh, there we go. Hi, everybody. This is Susan yeah. Hovannik. Uh, from the chamber, it's great that you are all here to join us today. Thank you, Natalie, for all that wonderful information that you gave us. And of um, as we um, mentioned, we will um, email out the PowerPoint to all the attendees. So if you've registered, we have your email address. We'll be able to get that to you. And um, we also will archive this recording. So give us about a week, and it will be up on our website. So again, we can notify you when that's available. You can on that. Um, and please tune in to our next tips from our experts will be happening next Wednesday, that's September 9th at 11 a.m. Details are being put together as we speak, so we'll look for that to be coming out. And um, if there's anything else anybody needs, we hope you're all doing well. Please reach out to any of us here at the Chamber. Um, send us a message. We'll, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.